हेलो एवरी वन सो वी आर ऑलवेज अपडेटिंग यू रिगार्डिंग डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडेमिक टूडे विल डिस्कस ए सर्टन टाइप ऑफ प्रॉब्लम विच इज रियली ग्रोइंग डे बाई डे इन द कोविड नाइन्टीन पेशेंट्स दैट इज म्यूकर माइकोसिस यू मस्ट हैव हार्ड फ्रॉम द सोशल मीडिया दैट ए लॉड ऑफ डिस्कशंस ऑन ऑन म्यूकर माइकोसिस सो फाट विल द न्यू वट न्यू विल डिस्कस टूडे विल डिस्कस समथिंग न्यू वट इज दैट इज द डिफरेंट लैबोरेटरी कंडीशंस और डिफरेंट लैबोरेटरी टेस्ट वट वी नीड टू परफॉर्म फॉर द फॉर द म्यूकर माइकोसिस डिटेक्शन डिसाइड्स दिस इज देयर एनी ट्रीटमेंट्स अवेलेबल या ऑफकोर्स देर आर सम ट्रीटमेंट्स अवेलेबल एंड विल विल डिस्कस फ्यू ऑफ द ट्रीटमेंट्स एंड विच शुड बी द बेटर दैट सो दैट इट विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू टू टेक अ डिसीजन ऑन वट इज बेटर and besides this we will also discuss about a very a big concern for all the indian population that is the average cost of the treatment for the mucor mycosis and what is the mortality rate so mucor mycosis is nothing but the black fungus and uh, it's uh, chiefly it is called as the periorbital fungal infection so uh, in the covid 19 patients you will find a lot of periorbital fungal infection which is uh, uh, which is really uh, done by the, a group of uh, fungus that is the mucorelli and uh, due to that the name has been in, uh, has been told as uh, mucor mycosis so what are the risk factors which is related to my mucor mycosis let me tell you that mucor mycosis is not a new disease it's a very old and uh, very rare a uh, type of fungal infection so there are a lot of risk factors uh, which is uh, which causes the mucor mycosis such as uh, hiv or aids diabetes lymphoma organ transplantation or uh, the uh, long term steroid use this is very important i need to highlight here long term steroid use there are a lot of elements where we use the steroids for different purposes and uh, this is one of the uh, reason why i will discuss that why it is also a bigger concern for the covid 19 patients and in several immune suppressive conditions uh, including covid 19 and uh, various respiratory pathways then hospital acquired infection so this is there is a lot of uh, different setups where uh, i need to tell you that uh, where there is a immune suppression or we are we are taking certain drugs which uh, alter the immunity so in those cases the immune uh, the mycor mycosis may play a major role so as far as the statistics is concerned so this is a bigger concern nowadays in covid 19 patients after the discharge after their recovery so this is a bigger concern like uh, in maharashtra more than 2000 cases has been reported already um uh, and uh, in it is growing in bihar gujarat new delhi and also a lot of parts of odisha so uh, in in the covid 19 positive cases we are t- telling about after their recovery they are getting this type, type of infection so let's discuss something about mucor mycosis so mucor mycosis is classified into five types according to their origin uh, so it is called as rhino cerebral although this type of uh, Uh, different cl- classifications are there but in uh, covid 19 patients all together can happen or very we'll discuss that which is very related to covid 19 patient so, so let's first uh, discuss about the types that's the uh, sinus brain which affects the sinus and brain that is called rhino cerebral mucor mycosis pulmonary mucor mycosis cutaneous mucor mycosis then gastrointestinal mucor mycosis and disseminated uh, mucor mycosis so the sinus and brain is affected in case of diabetes patients covid 19 patients and kidney transplantation patients and uh, the pulmonary mucor mycosis which involves the lungs that is very common also in case of cancer and covid 19 so i will highlight here two things rhino cerebral mucor mycosis and pulmonary mucor mycosis these are the two Uh, major mucor mycosis which occurs in case of covid 19 discharge patients and uh, besides this there may be the cutaneous mucor mycosis or gastrointestinal mucor mycosis and disseminated which spreads through blood to spleen and heart that can also be seen in case of uh, covid 19 uh, recovered patients so let's uh, have a discussion on what is how this mucor mycosis occurs in case of uh, the covid 19 patients so normally the uh, this is the inoculation or the uh, infection starts with soil 
air and spoiled food so these are the sources where the uh, mucarelli can attack the uh, the body and so the inoculation starts then this uh, due, uh, due to this this uh, fungus get inside uh, the human body through the nasal cavity and through the nasopharynx root and uh, crosses the nasopharynx uh, the paranasal sinus and reaches to the orbit okay then in orbit it has it can goes through the meninges to brain directly it can affect the meninges and brain or it may go to the naso lacrimal duct through the naso lacrimal duct it reaches to the blood vessel by invading the wall and causes the vascular occlusion thrombosis so if it will happen then it attacks to the cns and again reaches to the brain so it's very important here is when the uh, when the co the mucormycosis reaches through the orbital uh, sinus to the brain or to it affects to the side to the to the brain uh, to or, or the cns then the chances of uh, getting recovery or the chances we can say that the is is very less and uh, the chances of morbidity chances increases so more than 50% uh, chances uh, increases if it reaches to the brain and cns so let's have uh, some more closer look on this so as far as the symptoms this is very important for us the how to detect that uh, that muco this is a mucormycosis not any other uh, viral uh, infections or some other bacterial infection so there are some some symptoms uh, we we have to very uh, we have to very keen uh, to observe them so those are the uh, first starts with the low grade fever and some sinus infections okay so there will be a very low grade fe fever like 99 to 100 so it's always 99 we can say that in a lot of patients uh, as far as the literatures uh, we found that uh, there is a, a low grade something the fever is always 99 then it is associated with cephalgia so that is a cluster headache that means one part of the headache uh, one side of the uh, head it will ache then sinusitis so we have to very closer look over here that the sinusitis is not always due to bacteria we have to think it uh, uh, twice that it may be the fungus or maybe the mucormycosis besides this one side facial swelling that will be you can see in the figures that one side facial swelling then it is associated with blurred vision so i will highlight here few things nasal congestion blurred vision one side headache low grade fever and the right orbital cellulitis so these are very major symptoms major signs uh, uh, major signs and symptom for the mucormycosis we should not avoid uh, if we are finding these especially these are symptoms other than what is mentioned the other symptoms like uh, uh, like the soft tissue necrosis then orbital apex syndrome eye swelling skin redness warmth uh, swelling difficulty in breathing persistent cough nausea vomiting so all these abdominal pain bleeding in the gi these are very rare but the major here we have to uh, we have to be considered here is the right orbital cellulitis cephalgia that is the one side headache sinusitis one side facial swelling and blurred vision and sometimes nasal congestion so these are the major symptoms which can really uh, create a problem uh, to detect to 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 find out that whether it is mucormycosis or not we have to be very careful in this symptoms so i i i i mostly i i am careful about the the symptoms so what are the risk factors everybody in social media you more must have known that the risk factor is the corticosteroids the steroids what we are using in for the treatment of covid 19 patients and i will uh, add a little bit there that some antibiotics are also uh, also or the misuse of some antibiotics also may be a risk factor for the uh, for the mucormycosis development how they causes the mucormycosis so first of all uh, let me discuss that who recommends that for covid 19 patients uh, there is a in case of severe uh, covid 19 patients you can use steroids as a life saving drugs such as dexamethasone 
corticosterones, uh, hydrocortisones, then prednisolones. So, uh, so these are the uh, different, and uh, most probably we use, we saw the, there, uh, there is a lot of use of dexamethasone, but it is only recommended for the severe uh, patients. We should not use for the, uh, the uh, not severe, the patients who are not severe due to COVID-19 or who we can say, how we can differentiate that we can say that the patients who are not on oxygen therapy, we should not use, we should avoid this use. So what it causes, this dexamethasone, it induces, it causes immune suppression. It directly causes immune suppression and also the most more concern for mucormycosis is it increases the sugar level and it increases the sugar level not only in case of diabetes patients. It also increases the sugar level of non-diabetic patients, non-diabetic diabetic COVID-19 patients. So in both diabetic and non-diabetic case, the sugar level increases. When the sugar level increases, if you are having any persistent fungal disease or maybe the sources, you are exposed to the sources like from soil or from any type of uh, other type of, uh, you know, soil, air. So they can also infect, they, the fungus can infect. So there is a exervation of the pre-existing fungal diseases and which later on converts to mucormycosis. So this is one uh, reason that is the increase of sugar level. So hyperglycemia or increase of sugar level is one reason. Besides this, the COVID-19 treatment due to when a person is suffering from COVID-19 and is recovered or anything, or he suffered from COVID-19 itself. So there is a decrease of T lymphocytes. You know, T lymphocytes are our, our uh, major defense mechanism. So they have always a decrease of T lymphocytes so where especially the CD4 and CD8, they are two different T lymphocytes. One is T helper, one is cytotoxic T lymphocytes. So they alters. So due to this alteration also, the exervation of pre-existing fungal diseases can lead to mucormycosis. So this is the mechanism uh, with the risk factor how the mucormycosis develops. So uh, I will highlight here, there are certain things uh, if we'll do, then we can avoid the mucormycosis. So I will highlight here the what we should do and what we should not do. What we should do, that first thing is, as we know that a sugar level induces the mucormycosis. So control over the hyperglycemia, the increase of sugar level. Then second is monitor the blood glucose level, non-diabetic patients. So non-diabetic people monitor the sugar blood glucose level after the discharge from the hospital or the post-COVID discharge. Third thing is stop taking the steroids. And if you are taking the steroids since long time, you cannot avoid it due to some other uh, pre-existing diseases, then take the correct dose, correct timing and in a correct duration. So this is very important and we have to keep in mind our blood sugar level when we are under steroid therapy. So besides this, if you are in uh, the oxygen therapy during the COVID, uh, uh, COVID treatment, then you have to be careful about the clean sterile water should be there in the humidifier of the oxygen therapy. Then I told you that another thing I added that is the antibiotic, correct use of antibiotic. If you are taking too much of antibiotic in an improper way or we are taking a lot of higher doses of antibiotic, then that will also lead to the exervation of the pre-existing fungal diseases. So these are the do's. What are the don'ts? What we should not do? We should not miss warning signs. We discussed already the warning signs. What are the warning signs? We should not uh, miss them. If we are getting some warning sign, then next what we have to do, we have to go for the uh, for the aggressive lab test. The lab test will I will also discuss in my next few uh, slides. So first thing is, so we should not miss the warning sign. Don't consider all the sinusitis as bacterial sinusitis. You have to be at today's date. You have to be very concerned if a person is having sinusitis, then we have to do a aggressive lab test, aggressive lab test. I will discuss those aggressive lab test to avoid that it should not be a mucormycosis. And if it is a mucormycosis, then start the treatment immediately. So what are the lab tests we need to uh, do to, to detect it? 
So first thing is very important that are very easy also that is the tissue biopsy and the culture test, the fungal culture test. So tissue biopsy, when you go for a tissue biopsy, what type of tissue biopsy will do? We'll go for simple a, a hematoxylin eosin staining, H and E stain, hematoxylin eosin stain, where you can see the spindle-like structures. Those, those are the fungal structures. You can see on the first uh, slide there, here, then in the picture. Then we there is another staining called pass staining. Pass staining also very clearly you can see the, the fungal structures. Again, to confirm, you can go for a GMS staining. So GMS staining will also show you the fungal structures, the thread-like structures. You can see in the slide, the thread-like structure in, the, in, the, in a uh, blue background, you can see. So those are the GMS staining. So this is the initial uh, test. After that, you can, of course, you can take a fungal culture media and you can develop the fungus and you can uh, go for a fungal test under the microscope. That also can be done. Besides this, we can go for a CT scanning or MRI scanning uh, of the affected areas or, or where you are getting some doubts like sinus, lungs and other parts wherever you are thinking that there may be a chances. So if you can see that we can see some depositions, some uh, fungus, fungal infections uh, during the CT scanning also. So besides this, there are some confirmatory tests also. That is the MALDI-TOF mass spectra. MALDI-TOF mass spectra, let me tell you very briefly. So MALDI-TOF is matrix assisted laser disruption ionization time of right mass spectrometry. So this is the name. So multi-top test we need to do. This is a very confirmatory test. Very aggressive test but confirmatory test. What it does? It causes the protein fingerprinting. So the, we will do a protein fingerprinting with a, because there is a mass and it will detect from the database that to analyze these proteins are from fungal culture or not from the specially the mucorally or not. So this is the maldit of MS uh, spectral data but you can see in the picture also it can identify the microorganism. It can also confirm you that what is the subtype and how to take a decision on the therapy. So maldit of MS will give you a very clear uh, picture. This is a very aggressive test very clear picture about mucromycosis. So besides this, there are some very specific tests like the PCR where you can go for the internal transcribed uh, transcribed spatial region that is ITS region, ITS1, ITS2. There are two regions so it's with the help of PCR we can do by the help of primers. You can use the ITS1 primer or ITS2 primers. Besides this, you can go for a whole gene sequencing like uh, the nucleic acid sequencing and you can uh, detect this a disease also and confirm the disease. Besides this, we can go for a metabolomics uh, test. So it is also a very confirmatory test from the breath test. You will go for a GCMS and you can detect the, uh, the proteins and uh, whether they are coming from eucromycosis infection or not. So these are the various laboratory tests to till date which are uh, being practiced and some are also in research. So besides, I, I will rather suggest you here the tissue biopsy, this the culture, the CT MRI and MALDI-TOF. So these are the major laboratory tests to detect the mucormycosis. So what are the treatment options? So first thing you need to go for a surgery and remove out that particular tissue which is affected. So this if possible. So if it is in the, in the periorbital region, you can remove it by doing a surgery. Then you have certain different options. Okay, but in all the options, remember that amphotericin B is the major drug for mucormycosis. This is very important. Fluconazole, Vericonazole, then Econocandines. So these are the uh, different uh, uh, antifungals. They will not work. Fluconazole will not work. Vericonazole will not work. Then Econocandines, they will also not work. So what it will work here? the amphotericin B, very specific medicine which is uh, which is required to be imp uh, to be given to the mucormycosis patients. So besides this, we can use a combination option one, let's discuss, that is the uh, meropenem, uh, uh, meropenem IV you can give along with the vancomycin and amphotericin B. And second option is amphotericin B and the posaconazoles or isabucanazoles. So that also can be given 
or in third option uh, we have discussed like amputation b the oxycolate uh, so that's the uh, that's a good uh, formulation uh, to be used and then we can give the posaconazoles uh, uh, then uh, posaconazole can be given as a maintenance therapy so these are the different therapy as uh, uh, so is available or uh, being practiced for mucormycosis but the major is amputation b here so what should be the treatment cost so this is the approximate cost uh, so just from analyzing i analyze them from the different uh, literatures and i found that they, this may not be the fixed cost this is the approximate cost what is the approximate cost amputation b is a very expensive drug it costs something around 5000 to 8000 per vial and you need to give it for 4 to 12 weeks so uh, the other cost, other expenses in a, uh, in a private hospital or in a hospital setting, uh, we found that it's something cost around 60 to 80,000 per day cost and the therapy will go from 4 weeks to 12 weeks. So it is a very, very expensive, uh, you know, treatment uh, option for mucormycosis. And uh, there is another thing I need to highlight here. So this is all to total about the mucromycosis discussion, but I need to highlight one point here. I found in the social media also there is for COVID-19 patients, there is a cow dung therapy where you use the cow dung, cow urine and all those things. So this cow dung may be another source of mucromycosis for COVID-19 patients. So uh, we need to verify it. We need to analyze before taking such type of adopting such type of therapies so this is just from the social media i got i need to share uh, I, I thought to share with you guys so thank you so much uh, please stay with us for um, uh, many updates we already updated you uh, a lot of things related to covid 19 especially technical points uh, we discussed uh, with all the mechanisms how the drugs are used you can find all the links uh, in the down you can uh, find uh, find them and you can go through and really they are informative uh, for the covid 19 uh, era or for the covid 19 pandemic so many more things are there please don't forget to subscribe and uh, thank you so much namaskar